Hello. You hungry? Sorry, no carrots today. Don't try to eat my camera. Oh man. <laughs> this guy is really getting in here. Uh oh. Hi there, good afternoon. Another day in the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, also called just Northern Cyprus or the TNRC. I am out here on the peninsula, the horn that sticks out to the northeast. Arrived yesterday coming from Kyrenia. Rental car up ahead here, 52 euros or $56 US per day. I am staying at my hotel here again tonight and so I have today to explore around. I'm going to hop in the rental car very soon and start driving that way further down the peninsula and hopefully get uh, pretty close to the end. There are more beaches to see, there is a monastery, there are donkeys. Hopefully we'll come across some donkeys, that would be cool. And we'll see what else, as I discovered yesterday, there are lots of various random old ruins from the many different phases of history here in Cyprus in general and on the northern side. I'm not going to get lost too much in all of the history, which I have talked about in previous videos, but uh, there is the Green Line, a demilitarized zone, a border that crosses east to west, west to east, across Cyprus, dividing the southern majority Greek side and the northern majority Turkish side. In 1974, Turkey invaded for various political reasons or excuses, you could say. And as a result, then there was this division in which the Greek people on this side were forced to move to the south and the Turkish people in the south were forced to move to the north or perhaps by choice in some cases anyways it is a complicating history but uh, I am a travel vlogger I'm here to experience witness this uh, place the people despite the history of 50 years ago and before then and since then etc and get a you know taste an idea of the history the Greeks, the Romans, the Byzantines, the Ottomans, the British, etc. have all been here on this island in the Eastern Mediterranean, very strategically located. So very, very fascinating uh, history here. So I also wanted to address here an issue that uh, some of you might wonder about sometimes watching my videos and why I tend to get an afternoon start. So it is about 1.15 in the afternoon now. And so I wouldn't blame you for assuming that I must sleep in until 10, 11, 12 o'clock, something like that. But uh, this morning I woke up at 8.55 was when I first uh, checked my clock. It's random. Sometimes I get up earlier, sometimes I sleep in later. But as a YouTuber, then I have a whole different daily schedule that I have to work around as opposed to just being a traveler get up, have breakfast, get going. But in my case, I have to deal with the videos and one of the issues here is slow internet. 
The internet does not work in my room at all, only in the restaurant area, and there it is not dirt slow, but it isn't fast. So because of my uh, late arrival last night, I didn't get much progress done on my latest video. And so this morning, first thing I got up before anything, had some juice in my room and then uh, just got started editing. And fortunately, that video was pretty quick and easy to edit. I got it done in like an hour and a half. It was the shorter 20 minute castle tour video. Then I got to the restaurant and started having breakfast there as I showed and got the video started uploading and I could tell that it was going to take a couple of hours, two to three hours. It is actually still uploading at the moment. It is just sitting there finishing the upload and I will wait until that is done so that I know that it is done before I get going, but that should happen soon. And so that is what I have to work around with, the editing and then the uploading process, which is very variable, you never know how fast the internet speeds are gonna be. I can't leave the computer in the room because the Wi-Fi does not work here. And so I have to work around that. Otherwise, I might've just left the computer in the room and then got going, but I wanted to get it done. And so that is kind of holding me back a little bit is waiting for that to be uh, finished there. But you know, that is just the uh, life that I live. It is not all fun and play and games and unicorns and rainbows and mojitos. There is work to be done and the editing takes many hours, usually more than an hour and a half. Usually two, three, four, five, six hours to edit a video. But uh, I'm just working with things as they are and am now probably ready to roll. I'm gonna check the video. Room is there, grab my stuff, get going, see more of Northern Cyprus. And so we are cruising. This is the town of Dip Carpaz. It is the Carpaz Peninsula. Okay, let's make a stop. This is pretty awesome. The church next to the mosque. Beautiful church. The stonework is amazing. Look at these symbols. Little angel. Must be a closed door. It is a very, very sturdy one. And again, another just odd creature. What is that? A lion, I guess? There's something almost a little odd about the jazzy elevator music being sort of blasted over the church and the mosque. And then I guess it would get blasted out by the uh, Azan, and here, what is that? An eagle or a phoenix or something? Okay, so I'm guessing this isn't going to go very far. No, I can't help myself. Locked. Let's get a closer look at the mosque. Very interesting mosaic tile work on the top of the minaret there. So Dip Karpaz, not sure how you say that word, Kemni, means mosque, 1992. And then up ahead here, there's some sort of a pretty spectacular building as well as an old stone building. So man, within sight here, we have an old 
church, fairly new mosque, quite old, whatever this is. Nothing too special by the looks of it. Maybe from like the 1800s or something. And then this one is fairly spectacular looking. How to get a closer look at it. It must be some governmental building that became irrelevant perhaps after the Turkish invasion in 1974 because quite a remarkable and important looking building completely abandoned. Could this one have been built by the British perhaps? It's kind of old style, but not really that old looking. No indications, no years or anything. My best guess is a British administrative building of some sort. With nice gardens in the front. Huh. The mystery of history. All right, let's keep on cruising. And this is good news. We already have a sign for the monastery. That is the one, the Apostolos Andreas. Sounds very Greek to me. As I mentioned in my last videos, then uh, my phone service isn't working here. I have T-Mobile. Highly recommend it. It works almost everywhere in the world that I go. I have never had to get a SIM card ever in my life, an extra SIM card, while traveling. My T-Mobile plan just works basically everywhere, but for some reason, not too surprisingly, it is not working here in Northern Cyprus, even though it did work in Palestine. And so maybe I need to uh, call T-Mobile and they could fix something or maybe it just doesn't work here, I don't know. But I'm just rolling with it. It's not a huge uh, deal. But as a result, I am relying more on the signs. Now, I do have a connection that shows where I am on Google Maps. So that is helping. That helped me a lot yesterday to find the hotel there but I can't actually use Google Maps to direct me or search the internet or anything. So it's two minutes later and you can see we are now coming to the other side of the peninsula. It is getting narrower and narrower as we head up it. But the road crosses over and then continues up the other side. So just a quick stop to show this nice beach here. And then also I wanted to show the deal with my phone for anyone who is curious how this is working with the map. So you can see over there on the left is the hotel where I'm staying. There is the monastery, the red pin. We are right there, the blue dot, about halfway there. So the deal is that uh, when I don't have the internet connection, you can maybe see up there I have like two, three bars of cell phone connection, but not the internet. So it has enough of a connection to be able to pinpoint where I am and show where I am on the map. But I can't start a new direction. So I couldn't search for another place right now and then have that come up as a pin and then have it show me exactly where I am relative to that. And so back at my hotel in the restaurant there, then while having a Wi-Fi connection, then I 
search for the place so that I would have that already plugged in so that it shows me exactly where I am and then I can at least see where I am relative to where I'm trying to get to. Yesterday, the issue was I did not have the hotel plugged in driving all day yesterday to get there because I had plugged in the castle and the monastery as two points from one to the other before I left so that I would be able to find those places easier. And then after that, I couldn't plug in the hotel to have a more precise idea of where I was going because I didn't have the connection all day yesterday. And so then it was a little bit more of guessing. In that case, I'd taken a photo of the uh, location of the hotel on the peninsula here and then kind of match that up with where I was in order to uh, find the hotel because otherwise I wouldn't have known. At one point we ran into a roadblock and I had to drive all the way across the peninsula and then come back and then drive back over. At that point I wouldn't have known if I needed to keep going or what if I hadn't had the uh, photo at least of the map showing me generally where it was. So not having the, uh, you know, internet connection and maps working fully is a challenge. Like we're going back to the old days kind of. Like how did you even do it back in the old days with no phone whatsoever? I know because in 1990 I traveled in Europe for four months long before uh, cell phones and everything. But it is definitely more difficult. You have to have paper maps and then directions written down and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, Google Maps is definitely appreciated. All right, let's get out of here. All right, all right, all right. We got a donkey. So the reason that I mentioned a donkey before is because when I asked the uh, manager of the uh, hotel and restaurant where I'm staying, about uh, where to go here uh, today, then he mentioned the monastery and he mentioned donkeys. Basically he said you'll see donkeys and be prepared to feed them. Unfortunately, I don't have any food to feed them. Hello. You hungry? Sorry, no carrots today. Don't try to eat my camera. Oh man. <laughs> this guy is really getting in here. Uh oh. Okay, <laughs> let's uh, keep on cruising. That donkey really has the expectation to be fed. So I really like this peninsula, even though the landscapes aren't like the most picturesque that I've ever seen. Kind of stark and desolate and not uh, very colorful, but I just like the kind of wild, rugged feel. And then lots of beaches. They're not incredible, but they're not bad either. Some of them pretty nice and not totally overcrowded. I'm sure that you can find ones that are really not crowded if you try, hike somewhere find a random dirt road. So uh, this is definitely just like a very unique place to explore, both in terms of the landscapes, the culture being not especially well known and touristy, a bit of tourism, but uh, not a lot, and then the history, of course, being so fascinating. So, uh, I think that I will be titling this video, Is Northern Cyprus Worth Visiting? As is always the case, depends a lot on what you're looking for. There could be the issue of just getting here because the Urkan Airport has very limited flights, I believe. 
And then in that case, you have to fly into the Greek side to Larnaca or Paphos, and then you have to make that border crossing one way or another, and you can't take rental cars over the border either way, but you can drive if you have your own car. But uh, otherwise, it means taking a bus to Nicosia, as I did, and then walking across the border, and then from there, figuring things out. I don't think that public transportation is going to be, you know, especially easy. Probably there are buses, minivans, etc., but uh, especially with luggage, you know, that's going to be a real pain. So your best way to go is to rent a car. But uh, yeah, it's definitely worth visiting. Very interesting place, little known, with quite a lot to offer. The castle that I showed yesterday, one of the best castles I've ever seen. Like, just absolutely incredible. All kinds of different historical architectural wonders. The castle in Karenia, the monasteries, and then the towns. I haven't seen a lot. Nicosia is okay, not amazing, but Karenia, quite nice, and it will be especially nice once they finish that harbor construction project. Once that is completed, which will supposedly happen in a few months, so maybe uh, by next year, 2024, then that will be completed hopefully, and then it's going to be a really nice town. And then I've heard that Famagusa is the nicest city on the island. And then you have this very, very interesting wild peninsula to explore. So, absolutely, Northern Cyprus is, I'm not going to say, you know, my favorite place in the world, but it is up there. It is up there as far as like places that I would seriously consider coming back to to see more. And also I just kind of like the like mellow vibe. It just feels a bit sort of out of the way. Again, more history there. What is that? Like maybe a vineyard farm home or something? Shepherd's home. But uh, it just has this like sort of off the you know, main tourist route and route in general of being not somewhere that, you know, many people go out of their way to go to. Partly just because it is very little known and is associated with the dispute between the North and the South. It has that uh, unfortunate history. But, you know, things are quite peaceful now. And, uh, you can come here and prices are reasonable. And a lot to see. More donkeys. They even got their own signs. Donkey crossing. This is just such a wild scene here. We got sheep in the shade, more ruins. Donkeys up ahead. Farmhouses. Hungry donkeys. to that monastery. They're surrounded, three of them, 
So I just passed an absolutely epic beach. Huge, beautiful looking beach. So I will stop there on the way back and the monastery should be right around the corner up here. Not something you experience every day. Surrounded by hungry donkeys. All right. Looks like this is the monastery. They're selling donkey food. I wonder what it is. So this is the monastery. It's a little different than I expected. I had envisioned by like, coming to the end of the road, really desolate area, and then more of a ruined uh, building with uh, less people here. So you have this whole kind of touristy scene, all these juice stands and snacks and tourist trinkets. And then I'm not really sure if you can go inside or what, so let's just uh, explore around and find out. So I'm a little bit confused, wondering if I'm missing something. Okay. Restoration of the main church. I see, so that other building is a side building. This is the main building that is being restored. Okay. History of Apostolos Andreas Monastery. The existing and known structure is comprised of the main church built in 1867 and several extensions around it dating to 1914. So uh, not particularly old. So that is basically it, I guess. You can see, this all seems quite new. Let's get a look at the water, and then let's go jump in it. Back at that other beach, I guess. Oh yeah, looking blue and clear. Here we go again. So, I need to buy some of this donkey food, find out what it is, and do my duty. How much? Uh, this. Okay. Looks like it's, uh, I'm forgetting what it's called. Uh, one piece is two euro. Two euro, okay. One second. Okay, here we go. So, I am not sure what this is. I was thinking maybe it was like tamarind. Let's uh, see how they like it. Hello there. Okay. 
There you go, whoop. Yeah, they seem to like it. Is that tamarind or some other local? Uh... Okay, now this guy wants some uh, grub here. Here you go. Let's hope they don't get uh, too aggressive and try to eat my backpack or something. Whoa. All right, one more for you and then time to feed the other guys. Bon appetit. The kid didn't have change, so I bought two bags. Or he said he didn't have change, who knows? Maybe that is part of his business strategy. Hello guys. Okay, one bag down. Oh, see. Nope, don't uh, try to eat my shirt. Hello. Okay, one more for you. One more for each of these guys. One more for you. And one more for you. And then I am out of donkey food. Here you go, dude. Here you go. Enjoy. And so here's that beach. Check it out. It's an absolutely epic one. Parking lot down there, it looks like. So it looks like it's Big Sand Beach. And we have here the Big Sand Beach restaurant and bungalows. My car right there. I thought that I would see if there's a trail going down from here so that I can end up over there instead of at that parking lot and then the area with all of the umbrellas there. So uh, let's look for a trail. That's a good sign. Here we go. All right, all right, all right. It is time to get wet. Alright, here we go. Not looking like crystal clear waters, but the color of blue is really beautiful. Let's see what's under there. Okay, you can't see anything. Looks like it drops off right here. But I can't see how deep it is at all. So, uh, nice spot for a swim, but uh, not good for snorkeling right here at least.
Dip Carpaz, 11 kilometer hike from here. That is that first town that I stopped at with the church and the mosque. And then Sipahi, 16 and a half kilometer hike. Maybe I stopped there on the way uh, yesterday driving to the hotel. That could be where I stopped at a market. So I am on my way back and saw a sign for a monastery turned off the road. It was a good like three, four miles or something up here, but uh, I'm not sure that I can or want to go inside and uh, bother them in the monastery itself. Less of a uh, tourist scene here, but we have some very, very old looking buildings. Looks like a church there. I'm so intrigued by all of these different churches and the very different styles. This one quite different from the others. But clearly at least 200, 300 years old by the looks of it. Okay, well, I think that I'm going to finish this video here, get back to my room, get out of the hot sun, and tomorrow is another day of exploring with the rental car. I haven't decided yet what I'm doing, but very likely going to Famagusa, which is supposed to be one of the most beautiful cities in Northern Cyprus. I was in my car, just about to leave, and looked into the rearview mirror and saw that the door was open. The other people had opened the door, so uh, let's go inside. Very simple, but uh, very nice. Hello. Hello, can you speak Turkish? I don't speak Turkish. Do you okay. speak English? Uh, yes, I speak English. Can people follow this road where we can go? I don't know because I came from this way and I was uh -huh. looking on the map and this road goes back to the main road. Uh -huh. okay. But it looks like it's a dirt road, so okay. Okay. maybe it's not as good. Okay. I was considering myself, should I go this way or this way, but maybe I go the, okay. the way I came. So, so yeah, have a good, day. Good, good luck, yep. Okay, that is it for today. More coming from the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. See ya.